Now let's talk about a few things to help you get going with Blake Tyson's Nightlight. Now throughout this piece, you're going to be using primarily the double lateral stroke. And as we discussed previously, the double lateral stroke is akin to the double stroke on a snare drum where you're going to have one motion that will produce two notes. And the way it will produce these two notes is by a rotation of the wrist, either outwards or inwards, depending on which mallet you're going to start with. So if we're going to start with the outside mallet in the right hand or the left hand, where it will look like this in slow motion. So we'll make contact there and then flick the inside mallet such as that. Now as we speed it up, in the inside mallet we'll start like this. And as we speed it up it will look like this. The point is we want to make sure that we're not exerting too much energy. If we exert too much energy, all of these notes will start to compound and fatigue will start setting in pretty early. Now at the very beginning of this piece, you're going to start, have to play a G natural and an A flat between the two mallets three and four in the right hand. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're maintaining a proper alignment with the, with the forearm and the wrist and ultimately the, the entire hand. So a good way to do that is by simply swinging the elbow out in front of your body in order to compensate for the mallet difference. What we want to avoid is by keeping the elbow in closer to our torso and simply bending the wrist in to try to create the distance between the two mallets on those two notes. If you do that, you're going to lose all of the leverage that you'll be needing for a proper double lateral stroke. So once again, swing the elbow out in front of you in order to keep this proper alignment between the arm, the wrist, and the hand so that you can have a proper rotation for all of those double, double lateral strokes. Now, one thing about this piece is it's very busy. The entire thing is either 16th notes or 16th note triplets. And what we want to keep in mind is that there is a slower melody in all of that chaos. And we want to make sure that we're bringing that melody out to the audience so that when they're listening to it, they don't hear just a bunch of 16th notes or 16th note triplets, but they hear a melody on top of an underlying busy texture. So let's take this middle section that starts right here. primarily in the number four mallet in the right hand. So we want to make sure that the melody is heard. And a good way to practice this and a good way to practice phrasing that is by simply cutting out the left hand and by replacing that with double vertical strokes in the right hand rather than double lateral strokes. step further in taking out every second note in order to create a more half note feel for this melody. going to allow you to do it's going to allow you to think of a melody in a completely different way outside of the underlying 16th note texture and what you want to do is you want to practice phrasing that melody in whichever way you feel represents you the best practice it like that and then as you come to the conclusion of this is the way I want this to sound start adding in the other notes of the texture while keeping that same phrasing alive even in the busier texture that way the melody is now heard with the with the texture underneath it supporting it 
Now, a majority of the melody is going to be in the right hand. So we want to make sure that the left hand playing the part of the accompaniment supports it properly. So there's going to be two things that we need to keep an eye on as far as making sure that the melody is, not, is heard over everything else. One is that the left hand simply just doesn't overpower the, the, the right hand melody. And what you're going to have to do is by automatically playing that, that left hand much softer than the right hand because usually when you hear something over and over and over again, that's what starts being heard by the audience. So the more static in the left hand needs to be playing a little bit softer than the more active moving around right hand. Another thing that can help support the melody is by not playing the left hand the same all the time. So having that left hand rise and fall with the melody will create a nice support structure for the melodic material that's going on in the right hand. So let's take that same section and I'll emphasize the left hand rising and falling. <laughs> but you can hear that left hand rising and falling as the melody rises and falls. Now, we'll put it back into a more proper context, being in a more support role. So listen for the left hand gently rising and falling to support that melody. the piece, keep an ear out for where is the melody and how can the left hand support it. Keeping in mind that the texture is not going to help because of the fact that it's so busy throughout. I want to say thank you to Blake Tyson for writing this piece for me. I've really, really enjoyed working on it and it's provided me with a whole lot of good things to say in order to help everybody out. So I want to say once again thank you to Blake Tyson and I hope all of this will help you learn his piece Nightlight.